My name is Logan Jones, and I want to give the message that God knows you and he loves you, and he does have a plan for you, a personalized plan, and that is something that I've really learned through my experiences with same gender attraction. I think it begins when I was 11 or 12. I realized that I was a little different. I felt different than all the other, the other guys. And rumors started going around when I was 12 that I was gay. And just random people would come up and ask me if I was the gay kid. Middle school was really hard for me. I spent many nights in bed crying myself to sleep. Then I started realizing that I wasn't attracted to girls. The hormones kicked in and I was attracted to other guys. One night when I was 13, I was lying in my bed, it was all dark, and I was sitting there crying and I just, it just, I finally admitted that I was attracted to guys. And I whispered in the quietest whisper ever so that no one else could possibly hear. I just whispered, I'm gay. High school came, I just sort of accepted it as that's how it was. There wasn't much I could do about it. I tried so hard to not be attracted to guys. I knew that that wasn't normal. I knew that a good little Mormon boy shouldn't be attracted to other boys. Every time I blew out birthday candles, I wished to be attracted to girls. Every time I threw a penny in the fountain at the mall, every time it was 11-11, I made a wish, anything, that's what it was. And I would pray to Heavenly Father to make it go away. And it never did. But I still had that fear, that shame. I didn't want anyone to ever know. And I dealt with it fine, I guess. But then I got to college and I had to confront it. It was everywhere. Everyone was dating. It was that time where I'm supposed to go find my eternal companion. The struggle was that I knew the church was true. I knew that the gospel really was restored and that all the principles taught in the LDS church were true. That wasn't the issue. The issue was whether or not I could stick with it, whether or not I had what it took to stay committed. I knew that I wanted to have relationships with other men. That's something that was just deep inside me. It's a completely natural feeling. And then I decided to read this book I'd been hearing about called In Quiet Desperation. That book also had a huge effect on my life. It helped strengthen my testimony of the gospel, my testimony that I really can stay true to the doctrines of the church. And it also gave me more courage to be who I am, to, to not be afraid of the attractions that I have. I found the church's official doctrine on it on the church website that I had no idea. The pamphlet, God Loveth His Children, talks by Dallin H. Oaks and Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, and that changed my life. For the first time, I knew that it was okay that I was attracted to men. So I decided to tell a couple of friends, and I did. They reacted fine. I, it was so nice to have someone to talk to, so nice to be sort of free of that burden, of that, that secret. It made my self-confidence, my self-esteem grow so much. I was so much happier. I just felt alive and free. I told my bishop, my stake president. I even told my parents. And it was all good experiences. It, I just felt so loved, so, so free. I could really feel God's love in my life coming through all those around me, my friends and my family. I first told my parents when I was 18 on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, right? And I told them, and they took it kind of hard at first. They were fine with it. But they, they cried. They told me I shouldn't talk about it with anyone. They were, more, they were sort of scared for me. I think they were a little bit scared of what other people would think. But seeing their change over the past three years has been really incredible. So even with all this new hope, I still struggled. Life still has its ups and downs. Near my house, there's this hill that overlooks the Salt Lake Valley. And I would go there, and I'd just sit there, and I'd just think, I'd cry, I'd pray. I really came to have a better relationship with God there on that hill. 
So then I started my mission. And when I got to the MTC, it was a little hard for me because prior to that, I had been able to talk to people about my struggles, about my issues with same gender attraction. But in the MTC, I felt all alone. And then one day, a missionary in my MTC district was sick. So I volunteered to go back to our room with him just to, just to hang out there while he rested, while he slept. And we were just sitting there talking about life and other things. And then all of a sudden, he just says, Elder Jones, if you have a problem with homosexuality, that's OK. And then we talked about it. And I had someone I could talk to. And then I ended up talking to one of my MTC instructors. And he was great. They had both been prepared. They both had people in their lives who were close to them who experienced same gender attraction. They understood it. And then I got to the mission field. And I s still, the first little bit, I needed to talk to somebody. And once again, my companions were, were prepared. The Lord really does prepare people to be there for you. And he prepares you to help other people. I've told many, many friends. I've told two mission presidents, missionary companions, other missionaries I served with, some people in the mission field. I've told my parents. I've told a brother. I counted it up. And I've, to this point, I've shared this part of myself with over 100 people. And the responses have been incredible. I have seen people change. I've seen people learn. I've seen people grow because of the experiences that I've shared. I've seen people who, whose hearts were filled with hate towards gay people, and they've changed. I've shared my perspective and my story with them. A really cool transformation to see was with my parents. I talked to my parents about doing this project, about filming my story, and they were 100% supportive about it. They thought it could benefit a lot of people. And my dad even letting me borrow this shirt even. He gave me a father's blessing. I've come to see my same gender attraction as something that can really teach me. I've become more charitable. I can accept other people's differences. I can see them, can see past one little part of them that might seem different. I have learned patience. I could have been given diff other trials, but I guess I'm sort of, I'm sort of stubborn in a way. Most things that happen in my life that are hard, I just push through it. I go and do it myself. You know, not a big deal. I'll, I'll make it work. I'll make it happen. But I say I'm doing attraction has been it has forced me down on my knees. And there's nothing on this earth that, that would prevent me from acting on my attractions. There's no person, there's no group of people, there's no prejudice, there's no judgment that would, would stop me. But the only thing that was strong enough to make me commit to not acting on those attractions is my testimony, the eternal perspective, that there is a life after this life here on earth in the book of John in chapter 9, people are asking Jesus Christ about this man who was blind. They ask, whose fault is it? Is it his fault? Is it his parents? And he says, it's no one's fault, but it's so that the works of God be made manifest in him. And I'm so grateful that I've been able to learn that through my experiences. I am only 21 years old, and it amazes me that I am already in this place in my life where I can share my story with everyone that I've been so blessed to have the support system that I do, to have the testimony that I do, that I can be a voice of hope. I have no idea what the future holds, but I know that it will be amazing, that the Lord has a plan for me, that as I trust in Him, I will receive blessings beyond measure. And I'm so grateful for that.